Hello friends. Today, I will share with you the RYLR406 LoRa module from Rayux. This module is really cool because it can communicate over long distances up to 15 kilometers. That's why it is better than the older versions like RYLR498 or RYLR998. Today, I will be exploring this versatile RYLR406 LoRa transceiver module and show you how to use it effectively. First, let's take a look at the features of this module. It offers a wide frequency range of 426, 433, and 470 megahertz. So it can be used in different regions of the world. The module is based on a chip called Semtech SX127, which is very good at picking up signals and using power efficiently. It offers excellent blocking immunity, so you can communicate reliably even when there is noise or interference. The module has low receive current of only 16.5 mA, which helps in minimizing power consumption. The module can be controlled easily using AT commands over serial communication protocol. So you can use it with Arduino or any other microcontroller. This module operates on 3.3 volt. It's recommended to use a power supply voltage between 2 volts and 3.6 volts. The module supports a communication range of at least 4.5 km and up to 15 km. The actual range may vary depending on the specific conditions and environment. The best part is that, it does not use much power. When transmitting the data, it only needs 43 mA of current. And for receiving the data, it needs 16.5 mA of current. This makes it perfect for projects that run on batteries. Additionally, when the module is in sleep mode, it consumes just 0.5 microamperes of current, making it even more efficient. Before integrating the RYLR406 LoRa module into your projects, it's important to configure it properly. You can use a USB to TTL converter, which allows you to connect the module to your computer for configuration. Keep in mind, the RYLR406 module operates on 3.3 volts. So ensure that, you have set the jumper on the TTL converter to 3.3 volts. Connections are straightforward. You can refer this wiring diagram to connect the LoRa module to the USB to TTL converter. Here I have connected the LoRa module to my USB to TTL converter as per wiring diagram. Now, I will connect it to my computer using a USB cable. If you want to configure the module using Arduino, then the wiring setup is slightly different. Here I am supplying the power to the LoRa module using the 3.3V pin of Arduino. Make sure, never provide more than 3.6V to the LoRa module, otherwise your module get damaged. Additionally, You'll need to use a voltage divider to connect the RX pin of the LoRa module to Arduino. The purpose of the voltage divider is to convert the 5 volt signal from the Arduino to the 3.3 volt which is compatible with the LoRa module. Remember to double check your connections and ensure that the voltages are within the specified range to prevent any damage to the module. Next. Here I have connected the second LoRa module to my Arduino board as per the wiring diagram. To start the communication with the LoRa module, you need to upload this code to the Arduino. You can find the download link in the description. You just select the Arduino board and COM port. Then click on the upload button to upload the code. Once the upload is complete, open the serial monitor. Here. Select the baud rate 115,200. And then select no line ending option. Now the first device is ready to receive AT commands. For the second device, open another instance of the Arduino IDE to communicate with it. Since the LoRa module is connected to the USB to TTL converter, there is no need to upload any code. 
You just select the COM port of your USB to TTL converter. And then open the serial monitor. Here, select the baud rate 115200. And then select both NL and CR option for line endings. Now we have set up the both devices, so let's start configuring the LoRa modules. First, to check if the LoRa module is responding by sending the AT command from the serial monitor. If you receive an OK response, it means the LoRa module is working fine. Next, I will set the address of the LoRa module using the command AT plus address. To check the current address of the module, you just add question mark at the end of the command. The current address is 12, but for demonstration purposes, I will set it to 1 by using the same command. AT plus address and then equals 1. This command will set the address of LoRa module to 1. OK response means the command is executed successfully. I will just verify it by send the same command one more time. Here you can see the address have been changed successfully. You can assign any address to your LoRa module from 0 to 65535. Next, I will set the network ID of the LoRa module. The current network ID is 5. But I will set it to 7 using the command AT plus network ID equals 7. And then press enter to change the network ID. Let's confirm that if network ID has been changed successfully. You can use any number for the network ID from 0 to 16. Make sure you have set the same network ID for both modules. If you want to check the frequency band, then send the command AT plus band. The default frequency band is 434 MHz. You can change it if you want. But I will use the same frequency which is 434 MHz. Now I have configured the first module successfully. Next, you will need to repeat the same configuration process for the second module. I will start by sending the AT command with the OK response. Next, I will assign the address to this LoRa module. The current address of this module is 5. But I will change this address to 2. Make sure, the address must be different from the first LoRa module. Next, you will need to set the network ID of this module. Let's first check the current network ID of the module, which is 5. Next, I will set the new network ID. It's important to use the same network ID that we set for the first module, which is 7 in this case. It's always a good idea to verify the settings after making any changes. Finally, I will check the current frequency band of this module. Since I want to use the default frequency, so I will not change it. Now we have configured the both modules. Let's send some data to test our setup. To send data, you can use command AT plus send, then equals, and then enter the address of the LoRa module where you want to send data. In my case, I will send data to device 1. So, I will set the address to 1. Next, enter the number of characters you want to send. I want to send 5 characters, so I will set it to 5. Lastly, Enter the actual data you want to send. In this example, I will send the message, hello. The command is ready, and it will send the message hello, to the first module. Here you can see, the hello message is received on the other end. Next, I will send the same message from the first device. I will use the same command with one change. This time, I will set the address of the second module, which is 2. Then press enter to send the data. As you can see, the second module successfully received the message. This confirms that the communication is functioning properly between the two devices. Next, now, it's time to test the range of this module. I have written two codes for testing, one for the transmitter, and one for the receiver device. 
In the transmitter code, it sends the message hello at a one second interval to the second device. To send the data, I have used the same AT command that I was used previously for sending data. On the receiver side, the code receives the incoming data from the first module. And then it checks if the incoming data contains the message hello. If it contains the message, then the code will blink the LED to indicate that the data has been received. Next, here I have uploaded the transmitter code on the Arduino Nano and the receiver code on the Node MCU board. I have used the Node MCU because it operates at 3.3 volts. So I can directly connect the LoRa module to it without the need of any voltage divider. You can also use Arduino instead of Node MCU by using the same code. Next, to power the receiver device, I will use the Android phone. If you look at the LED, it is not blinking. It means the device is not receiving any data yet. Next, for the transmitter device, I will be using a 3.7 volt battery. However, you can also use a power bank or any other 5 volt power source. Now if you look at the LED on transmitter, it has started blinking now. It indicates that the data transmission has started. Similarly, the LED on the receiver side has also started blinking. It means it start receiving the data now. If I disconnect the power supply to the transmitter device, then the data transmission will stop. If you look at the LED on the receiver device, it has stopped blinking now. If I power the transmitter again, then the LED will start blinking again on the receiver side, which indicate that it start receiving the data again. You can also view the actual data coming from the transmitter using the serial monitor on your Android phone. Here you can see, I am constantly receiving the message, hello. Now, the both devices are ready for the range test. I will position the transmitter at a high point on my rooftop to ensure it can transmit data over long distances. On the other hand, I will take the receiver device with me outside to test the range. Currently, I am approximately 3 kilometers away from my house. If you look at the LED it is still blinking. It means it's still receiving the data from the transmitter device. That's all for today. If you have any questions, then feel free to leave them in the comments section below. See you in the next video. Bye.